The following production is part of the Play Some Video Games Podcast Network. Welcome to Board with Video Games, the gaming podcast that strives for the right balance of coverage for games you play on your table and on your television. We're a proud member of the PSVG Podcast Network and thrilled to be part of the Dice Tower Network as well. I am one of your hosts, Kyle Hyman, and joining me on this co-op adventure, the guy who will be releasing his Game of the Year contender next week, Josh Barboni. How are you doing, sir? Hi, I'm good. Sorry, I had to mute my microphone because my wife is typing on uh, the world's largest keyboard. Uh, I'm a noisiest. <laughs> the world's largest keyboard? <laughs> it just seems like it would be noisy. I'm large because it's so it's like mine. Clickety clacks. Ah, uh, gotcha. You know, gotcha. Those mechanical keyboards. Uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How about yourself? You know, we were talking a little bit before the podcast started, Josh, <laughs> that I just want to go out there and, you know, potentially apologize to listeners. I have no idea. I'm on a different computer. And I think now that the microphone is right, I think everything is set up right. I don't know if I have all the audio that I need on this computer. Most of it's in the Google Drive. But who knows? Maybe I forgot something on my other computer. I don't know. Yeah. My other computer finally, I think, is or my quote unquote new slash better computer, I think, is uh, seeing it. it's on its last legs already. <laughs> So it's going to be a little TLC. So I am recording off the old computer that used to record all of our shows, but that was a while ago. So if this sounds like crap, I apologize. If it's missing things, <laughs> I apologize. If this, if I'm actually recording off the wrong mic, even though it is saying right now I am on the correct mic, I apologize. One hundred percent money back apology. That's exactly one hundred percent money back. Indeed, indeed. So, Josh, it hasn't been, you know, quite as long as usual since we've last talked because we, you know, recorded last month's episode a little bit late. And now we're, you know, sure. at the end of spooky month here. So how have you been doing, man? What's been going on? Oh, boy. Uh, uh, I don't I don't know that I have anything po- uh, necessarily important to share. I was going to say positive and that made it seem like a downer. Uh, things are fine. Things are just, you know, they were as they were at the start of the month. Uh, you know, sometimes you wish that changes by the end of the month, and sometimes it doesn't. So, yeah, this is one of those months. It's uh, we're you know, we're still working on family stuff, trying to figure out uh, what's going on with the kiddo, and, and you know, just trying to be positive, productive people. And it's not easy. Uh, otherwise, I think everyone would do it, right? That's true. That is true. Well, uh, not everyone. I know some people who would choose not to, but. That's I, don't, I don't think it'd be that many people <laughs> would choose that. I think most people would choose. Probably not many, productive. right? Yeah. But the people that chose not to, boy, they would, they really stick out. <laughs> uh, so it is, you know, spooky month. This episode actually is coming out on Halloween. Uh, Josh, oh, yeah. you know, one thing you're known for is your love for horror movies. How's your yeah. horror movie watching been this month? This month, it's been pretty good uh, in general. Um Actually, no, I should say it's been okay based off of like how life is, but with like the time that like we always discuss, like having to watch things and choose to either watch something or play something or go to bed early. uh, It definitely is not as um, productive. There was a lot of movies I wanted to get to this year, this month, this year in general that I haven't seen, like some classics that i haven't seen or just some like blind spots uh I, I, that's not going as great but uh leading up to when we recorded decade of horror last month i watched quite a few movies leading up to that so uh I, i'm overall happy where i am but i'll probably knock a couple more out before halloween i didn't even really realize like i knew halloween was coming up but i didn't realize how close we were to it it's just a couple nights away from when you know when we're recording yeah, I don't know how we on got Tuesday, to the and I got to go out at, uh, after work and take the kid out trick or treating. Yeah, on a school night, which is not ideal because he'll be up past his bedtime. Mm-hmm. We're already, we're you know, we're so like in the system 
Yep. Like if he's up later, like then a half an hour, it throws everything out of whack. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see. Hopefully it's not as a terrible night. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about you. It's supposed to be pretty cold here. So yeah, we, we it was 80 here yesterday and then oh. it's going to be like 40 every day next week. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that was kind of like us on Thursday. It was in the seventies. Yeah. And then I looked at the weather for Friday and the weather said the high was like in the sixties. And then Saturday it said it was going to be in the upper low forties, upper thirties. And yeah. <laughs> so I went to work on Friday being like, okay, sixties today. But see, Josh, I didn't realize that that high was at like midnight. <laughs> right. You're not even going to get to that. until. So yeah. That, so it just got colder all day, all day long. It just got colder. Uh, so that was a bummer and yeah, now it's been pretty, pretty chilly out since then. And this just looks like that's going to continue now moving forward. It's supposed to be in the thirties for Halloween here as a high. So, uh, yeah. As a high? As Ooh. the high. Yeah. That Sheesh. day is in the thirties. So, uh, yikes. Oh yep. boy. Weather channel is trying to charge me money. You know, I get, you get a new phone and yeah. you try to look at the weather <laughs> or anything. Um, yeah, it's 47 right now and that's, you know considering it was 80 yesterday and we had the acs on on friday thursday and friday night uh it's pretty uh it's a pretty new england thing for us yeah i mean it's 33 here no big deal yeah no big deal that's i mean <laughs> that's cold i mean it, it is, is october it is. almost november so i get it yeah still to be expected yeah you gotta ease us into it weather it you can't just change yeah it went it was a rapid change definitely <laughs> so um, but just for, I, I can't believe it's almost November already. Like, I don't know where this year went. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been quick. I know. I think, I feel like we say that every year, but I really do like, and I've, I don't think that we don't mean it when we say it. Right. I think that just perspective, right? Yeah. No one's sitting around in April going, oh, this year's flying by, but when <laughs> it's, it's true. October, everyone are like, holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, since I also don't have any like major life updates, everything is just, you know, more of the same. Sure. Uh, here's my question for you, Josh. Uh, we are trying to plan our vacation for next year and we cannot decide what to oh. do. What would your suggestions be for a vacation for 2024? For a couple that has no kids and can do whatever they want, really? Correct. <laughs> yeah, basically, yes. <laughs> uh uh, I don't know if we could do a vacation again without the, the kiddo. Um, I still think a cruise is high on our list. We had a lot of fun on our cruise. Yeah. Um, Disney's still up there, but like with a kid, it's makes it more like better. Right. Um, like, I don't know, like a uh, big box vacation was like, overseas i don't know that i would want to be traveling right now overseas but like ireland england iceland kind of stuff like that those are right. big trips but like kind of like small local things i mean gen con's not gen, uh yeah gen con is a big thing on my list of things i want to do mm-hmm. um that's indie right yes yeah yeah uh i know it gets busy but uh, I, that's something like it's it's gonna always be busy, yeah. quote unquote. So that's something I would I always like to do. Uh, you talked about Disneyland there, right? Is that part of the her trip or like work trip, or would you make that a vacation? So I think Disneyland, if we do it, is going to just be a tack on to her work conference that she has to go to. Yeah. So it'd be for me. I would be there for like I would fly in be there for like two days and then like fly out. So it'd be yeah. very quick and short. Yeah. Um, and I think that would not be <laughs> because we really only have to pay for me for the most part. Um, I don't know that that is what we're counting as a vacation. So we're thinking of start, trying to do something in addition to that. Yeah. Um, and it was interesting. We were looking just randomly the other day at tickets to go to Ireland, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Airline tickets for us to fly to Ireland right now. Like it, between now and the end of the year, it's less expensive for us to fly to Ireland than it is to fly to Orlando, <laughs> even though the flight to Ireland goes through Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Uh, something that I've always thought of, and I don't know, I, I, I believe it's a yearly thing, uh, but I, a friend of mine did uh, 
like a Groupon Ireland mm-hmm. trip that they do like every year, but they give you, there's like a window of like two weeks where you have to book it. And it was like a week. You stay in the castle, mm-hmm. it included transportation and guided tours and it was, and airfare. And it was like 1200 a person. <laughs> and I was like, Oh my God. And she did it and she loved it. Yeah. Um, and we just had a friend who went to Japan too. That's also on the bucket list. Yeah, Japan is also on the list. Um, yeah, and because I think you know we've done Disney two years in a row. We've talked about a cruise. The problem that my partner's concerned about, she gets really motion sick. Yeah, my wife does too. So that's where, and I was like, well, I'm like a cruise boat probably is going to be big enough. Probably not going to be a huge issue. And then immediately after that, we watched a, a video about a cruise. Somebody on a cruise and like. Wow, we're really cooking today. I could feel the boat rocking. I'm like, well, oh yeah, you're okay, watching that... like the worst case video. You know, she, like she didn't get much, like she got motion sickness. Ha- not even a night, like a a portion of the night. Yeah, it, of the whole time we were on the boat, because yeah. you don't really feel it. Even right. I mean, there's definitely videos out there if you want to see a bad trip. Yeah. Uh, but you can always check the water, right? Where you're going, and that's usually where you'll see the rough seas are. Places that people don't typically sail. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's also just one of those things like sometimes what and sometimes weather is going to cause that to happen. Right. You can't yeah. completely avoid that. And that's just like avoid. going to anywhere and it just downpours like that might happen. Yeah. You know, so. So we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. We've just been trying to talk about what to do. And the problem is, uh, whereas I am moderately OK with just like chilling and not doing anything. She is not OK with that. She's not OK yeah. with just relaxing. So all inclusive so, resort would not be good. No, that was not our, that all. would be the other. Everyone always says, oh, you did a cruise. You got to do the all inclusive resort. And I think the same thing. You're very limited to what you yeah. can do. And yeah, my wife could sit and read a book and look at, you know, and sit in front of the water all day. But I couldn't. Yeah. We had talked about going to a board game convention. Gen Con would be tough just because of the time of year. Um, it's yeah. really, really hard. Uh, but we did talk about maybe trying to go to like one of the Dice Tower conventions or something like that, potentially. So we'll see. Yeah. We're trying to figure it out. But hey, listen. X unplugged a bad time for you? November, uh, December? It wouldn't necessarily be uh, a horrible time. Um, it would just Because they float that date a little bit, right? Like It's it usually is the last week of November, first week of December. Okay, so right after things. That actually probably wouldn't be horrible because my busy time for work. Because like Monday starts like a really busy like three-week stretch for me for work. Yeah. But we're always done with it before Thanksgiving. So thanks for so much for joining us this week, everyone. Uh, wow. Thanks so much for joining yeah, that's us my fault. this <laughs> month, everyone. As always, if you have any feedback, questions, or suggested topics, hit us up at Board of the VG on uh, X, I guess. Or check out the awesome stuff X. that we're posting over on the Instagram, also Board with VG. We're proud to be part of the Place and Video Games podcast family, and we encourage you to check out all the shows like the PSVG podcast, the Nintendo Shack, which just had their 300th episode psxp and you never know maybe a new show might pop up so be sure to stay tuned to all of your favorite psvg podcasts to stay up to date we're also a member of the dice tower podcast network so if you enjoy our conversations about board games and would like to dive deeper into that world we encourage you to check out the dice tower the dice tower podcast archive as well as all of the other members of the network no matter what type of board games you enjoy there's a podcast on the network that's right for you so with that josh it has been quite the month of games so sir yeah what have you been playing oh i didn't even try to think i didn't write a board game down i played seven wonders properly I should whoa it, right? you played it with the right rules seven wonders i just had to write it just in case i ever refer back to these things like how did i do this uh yeah, I got it, and I'm changing my uh, uh, thing at the end, too, because I forgot about this thing. Uh, I don't know why I forgot it. Oh, boy. It's been a day. It's been a day. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. What have we played? Let's talk about The Devil and Me first. Why not? Let's do oh, that. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about it. So Kyle and I revisited our, used to be annually, we skipped a year last year, right? Yeah, we skipped a year last year. We did skip it because Devil uh, and Me, I think, got delayed. No, no, we just skipped it because of the because of how buggy it was. It was. I think okay. it came out still. Uh, so we've been playing the Dark Pictures anthology games uh, co op because they're uh, gen- gen- generally a ton of fun. Um, and 
we tried every time we try to play it on launch, it doesn't work. Yep. Uh, and we waste hours of our night trying to get it to work and then ultimately play Overwatch or Halo or depending on the year, uh, yep. whatever game is around, <laughs> maybe Apex Legends. <laughs> uh, so then we started with the Man of Medan, then we played um, that second one. <laughs> And it's not the House of Ash, it's the second one, uh, which that was the one we had the biggest problem with getting going. Uh, but then we did eventually go back like a month later and try to replay it. Uh, then we uh, had the same issues with House of Ashes, I think, at least the first week we tried it. Yeah, and it Little Hope working. was the other one. Little Hope, that's right. Um. Oh, we did finish that. I didn't remember that we finished that, but Kyle reminded me that we did. We did. We did finish House of Ashes. Uh, yep. yep. And uh, so we started The Devil in Me, which is the the latest in the series. It uh, involves H.H. Uh, H. Holmes and the Chicago World's Fair. At least at the beginning it does. Um, and yeah, we played about, what, three to four hours? Yep. Right about halfway through, we experienced, I would say... More bugs than usual for us yep. in these games, which is not a uh, small feat. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's saying something. Um, and I would say there was probably, I, I think for me, I had a lot of technical issues with um, characters matching voices, and then I had a lot of personal issues with acting and choices made in the game. Uh <laughs> But I was still having fun while we played. Uh, how did you feel about your your uh, four hours into that? Well, Josh, what I will say is that uh, agreed. This is from a technical perspective, you know. Other than in House of Ashes, where we like played, we started it multiple times. We got to the same place and just crashed like every time, right? And we had to go back like later and do it. But then we were actually able to finish the game. Uh, the Devil and me. Outside of that so many technical issues i mean yeah there were times where josh is like this is what you're doing i'm like no i'm not like i'm this other yeah. character even <laughs> though on josh's screen it's like you are this character kyle is this character on my screen i'm a totally different character and i can't do anything like i can't interact with the environments like i can do absolutely nothing um there, there were just so many of these issues and though these games because of the nature of them of you know making choices and picking things up or not picking things up or how you use things like there always has kind of been like um you can always kind of see the wrinkles right or the cracks in like oh there's a a, a cut here or a jump here that didn't necessarily make a ton of sense that we jumped a little bit of a story thing and it, it didn't make a ton of sense or yeah um you would see them walking and you're like oh we uh, clearly somebody in our group already died that maybe wasn't supposed to die this early because there's just like a weird like gap between the characters of, like where that other character was supposed to be, you know, like so those things often happen, but I I think this game was for me at least, it's definitely the least scary. For sure. Not scary at all. Not scary one bit. And I'm and I'm not someone who is super into scary things these days, but I, I was there was like one jump scare and that was it. Uh, but otherwise, that four hours not remotely scary. Though we did have a character die, I don't feel like I have no idea why. Like I don't right. know what happened that led to that character dying. Like I I don't know what we could have done for that not to happen. Yeah. Um. And I also like care about these characters the least amount I've cared about any of the characters in any of these games ever. Like I just really don't care yeah, about. They're, any all, of them. they're also very boring characters. Yeah, they're super boring. Like the story just isn't that good. I don't like. Not that any of them were amazing, but this one in particular. Like I, yeah, I really enjoyed playing with you because I like playing games with you. Yeah. But like as far as this group of games goes, this for me was easily the weakest of the group that we have played. Yeah, hundred percent agreed. But we like, gotta I finish it. Yeah, like I don't know a situation where I would recommend this to someone. Free, and you've played the other three. If it was and free and you already played the other three, I would play it. And you also know all of the things that we just said about how like it technically is a mess. The characters are all <laughs> unlikable. Uh, well, the don't story... play it solo for sure. Do not play it solo. There's yeah. no way this could be fun solo. Yeah, the story is bad. Um, the writing is not great. 
the decisions don't always make sense. You sometimes will do something and the, the, what the character does as a result of that, you're like, why that's not at all like what, yeah. <laughs> what I thought was going to like correlate with that decision that I made. It just, yeah, it's bad. And it felt like the first one, man, I'm a Dan, but that had the excuse of it being the first in the series built off of a bigger engine game. Right. So this one should technically be 10 times better than that game. Yes. Yes. And whereas man of Medan definitely has some problems. It's still, I think did a much better job of creating like uh, a, a reasonable great story. atmosphere. Well, like a reasonable yeah. story and atmosphere, right? Yeah. Like in this, in the devil and me, like there <laughs> we're like in this like castle, like, bi- like hotel building thing. And like, we're running around and like the power is just completely out in some parts and completely other parts of the world. It doesn't make totally any, Oh my God. I completely <laughs> forgot about that. Yeah. Right. We're playing parts in the game where there's the powers out and they're to the point where like machines aren't working in the walls, the lights aren't on. And then you cut to a scene with two different characters and all the lights are on in the entire place. <laughs> right. The entire place is where you're like, so just the power in this one small spot is out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> unless we're like ready, to, unless they're going to give us a plot twist where we find out we're playing in different times. Yeah. Um, and if that's the case, it's lazy writing because they're not setting us up to expect that. Right. Well, so it's also I, not great. <laughs> yeah. And one of the hallmarks of the series is that it'll give you like these premonitions so you can like try to avoid death. Mm-hmm. But like it just, these ones I felt were so obtuse that you're like, okay, yeah. this thing is going to happen, but I have no idea how I'm going to get to that point. Or like, yeah. and like one of them, like the one that ended up happening, there was no like, oh, I feel like this is where we're going to. Like, what can we do to try to avoid it? It just kind of happened. So yeah, like, and well, then the one cool. I saw that I tried to make happen, I did what it showed in the thing, and it didn't happen. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, who knows? So, yeah, anyway, The Devil and Me, uh, I would say overall a hard pass. Um, yeah. But if like you I, have, yeah. Yeah, but if you have someone <laughs> kind of like Josh and I where you've played all the other ones and you are looking for a good night of maybe, not that even if you're <laughs> having a couple drinks and like sitting down and a playing few, it, like, yeah. Yeah, maybe go for it. Do you want to finish this? We didn't finish it. Do you want to finish I, this? Uh, you know, I think we should try to finish it. However, that being said, if if a better co op game, it, honestly, you know what? Maybe why don't maybe we should take the four hours that we would put back into that and play Returnal co op together. Ooh, that sounds like, that sounds like a I've been time. dying to play that co op, and I have not done that yet. Gotta knock off my Returnal rust. I'm done for that though. Yeah. We should do that instead. Yeah, cool. let's do let's play Returnal Co-op instead. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Uh, let's move on to another game that we can talk about. Well, yeah. I can only talk about this briefly, uh, and that's Assassin's Creed Mirage. Yeah. Um, we got to figure out. You, I'm up. You just bought like three games in a row after. <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm up. Uh, yeah, but, but they're yes. all games that are very much like in my wheelhouse that I really wanted. So. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Assassin's Creed Mirage, uh, you know, I was excited because it, it's being, you know, advertised as back to form, um, mm-hmm. to the Assassin's Creed games that I enjoyed uh, previously. I, I haven't spent too much time with it, but, uh, I don't know if that's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> and in fact, I don't know if we talked about this. Maybe we did. Was it out when we recorded last? It was not. It not okay. Out yet. Um, uh, I want, I will play more. There's just been so much going on. Um, and I can't, I don't, you maybe you can, you can probably speak to this better. Uh, versus like Valhalla and Origins and these games. Uh, I feel like the controls feel really uh, muddy, slow, clunky ish. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not how I pictured. I, I, and I'm not sure if it's because I haven't, played Assassin's Creed on a PlayStation controller in a while <laughs> versus an Xbox. But I really feel like all of my movement is delayed like a fraction of a second, but so much that I'm noticing. So more than a fraction of a second, I just feel like uh, uh, if it was like input lag, but without input lag, does that make any sense what I'm saying? I mean, Josh, it plays like an old Assassin's Creed game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's probably what the problem is, right? Um, when it should, I just don't. I don't think that controls are very intuitive for what I'm used to now. And maybe you're right. Maybe that is that old Assassin's Creed 
um, control I, scheme, but it doesn't. I know that they want to focus on stealth, but like the first mission is speed. <laughs> They're yeah. like, be fast. And you're like, wait a second. Okay, I'm trying to be fast, but like you're making me turn so slowly <laughs> and move so effort so like so effortfully. <laughs> uh, it's it just seems uh, counterintuitive to me yeah. so far. Yeah, how far? Like, how many hours would you guess you're in? Oh, I'm not more than three hours, and I only okay. played it a little bit because what else came out when that came out? Something else, or yeah, we but, were already playing something. Yeah, Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat was probably yeah. You still could have been playing Mortal Kombat. Could have still could have been playing Starfield. I mean, there's so much. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, what was the other uh, Lies of P and yeah, yeah. Remnant, all the games, uh, Lords of the Fallen, like so many things came out. Um, so for Assassin's Creed Mirage, I am probably seven hours in, eight hours okay. in. Um, I basically that's the only game I played from when it came out until when we obviously we'll talk about Spider Man, like between there, and that's about all the game time I had. So I didn't have a ton of time. Uh, it definitely to me feels, I don't think it's quite as my experience is not exactly identical to yours, and I don't really feel like it felt too like laggy or slow or anything like that. It definitely did feel like an old Assassin's Creed though. Yeah. Uh, and it did have a, a big focus on stealth. And if you get into open combat, you are probably not going to win. Like you can, <laughs> but sure. it's way, way harder to. Um, a lot of you really need to use a lot of smoke and to like, you know, be able to like hide again and then and assassinate people. Uh, with all this being said, this is probably going to be slightly controversial to the Assassin's Creed fans out there. Uh, Josh, I am someone who played every Assassin's Creed from since Assassin's Creed 2. I've played every single one of them. Yeah. And when they changed to kind of the new RPG style of them, initially I was like, I don't know if I really like this. Uh, but then I got used to it and I kind of, you know, like uh, Valhalla, I've put over 100 hours into. Yeah. Uh, Josh, I like the new Assassin's Creed way better than the old ones. That is not sure. what I'm going to say. Like That's not Mirage, a <laughs> yeah, going back to this old, I am not enjoying it anywhere near as much <laughs> as I've enjoyed Odyssey Origins and Valhalla. And if that makes me a bad person, so be it. Um, I really enjoy the. I I know this is probably. I love the Ubisoft maps that just have a ton of crud to go do, and you can run around and just like ignore your main mission for 60 hours because you're like taking out targets and like collecting chests <laughs> and just doing whatever and i know people are going to say like but kyle you don't like games that don't have story or that don't have like direction and you're right i don't in general but in assassin's creed it's not so much that there's not story or direction it's that there's a map with things that i can go and just check off those boxes right. and i like <laughs> doing that and i know other people don't and it's not supposed to be like the cool thing to like in games, right? You like the games that like let you create your own stories and blah blah blah. Like that's fine. Don't and let people, people dictate like what you like. Kyle. Right. <laughs> I still like checklist games. I do. I just really enjoy them, and it and the new ones are very much that. And this game has that to a degree, but the combat and the stealth, like the stealth, isn't good enough for me to want to engage in it all the time. But you have to do it because the ha the open combat is not good enough to be able to do regularly. You can do yeah. it with a couple of people, but the groups of people just it's it's not effective. Um, it's very challenging to do well. You can do it, but also just kind of it's a little bit the button combinations are slightly weird. So I will go back to this after I have finished a couple other games. I haven't deleted it or anything off my hard drive. Uh, but I am glad that this is like a quote unquote throwback. And I hope that Assassin's Creed Red, which is supposed to be the next mainline one and that we've started seeing some leaks for, I hope there it is much more like Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla than it is like Mirage, personally. Yeah. I feel like I should go back to Valhalla and give it a shot. Yeah. I really I, I had point. a ton of fun with Valhalla. <laughs> I had so much fun with that game. Yeah, it, it checks a lot of boxes for me, but for whatever reason, I just, well, I know the reason. <laughs> just going to get into it. But that's me. Okay, I'm glad that I'm not alone in that, but I, I'm also bummed that, you know, we're not enjoying the game that you grabbed, uh, which is fine. Uh, let's see. Speaking of games that you grabbed, oh, is there another game we could talk about? No, let's talk about Alan Wake 2. <laughs> So another game Kyle snagged. I didn't even know you were getting this. And oh, I I, dude, I'm so excited about this about game. <laughs> I haven't started it yet, but I'm so excited for it. Yeah, I won't spoil anything, obviously. Um, 
Uh, I I booted it up because I wanted to be able to talk about it at least for tonight. But mm-hmm. I was really like, you know, knee deep in Spider Man, so um, I, I only played about an hour and a half of Alan Wake, an hour, an hour and a half. And uh, actually, the reason why I stopped was because of how different from Spider Man it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I didn't really know what to ex- what I didn't ex- know to expect this, and it's very Twin Peaks. Uh, mm-hmm. That could be a turnoff for people, so then I'll say it's very X Files. If it's still a turnoff for you, then okay, it's not for you. Yeah. Um, but it certainly has spooky vibes, but mostly uh, it's crime scene stuff, right? You you play FBI agents, at least at the start of the game, and you're investigating a uh, a thing that happens at the beginning, which I won't spoil. Which was funny and fun to experience at the start of the game. Um, and if you're curious, you could probably just Google like someone like YouTube, someone playing uh, the first 20 minutes of Alan Wake 2 and see what I'm talking about. But it looks incredible. Uh, I'm actually really blown away with uh, how good the character models look mm-hmm. and the animations uh, walking through um, this like dense, like mountain, uh, woodsy area. Everything looks incredible. Uh, they do a great job with like the flashlight work and uh, it introduces the uh, so did you ever see the movie Dreamcatcher, the Stephen King one? Oh, uh, y- yes. So there's like the mind he goes into this guy's mind and has a song Blue yep. Bayou playing, right? So this game introduces the mind palace kind of thing, and where you're going into it reminds me of because this game obviously is made by Remedy, so it's gonna have a lot of uh, control feel to it. It reminds me of In Control when you go to the hotel. Oh, Um, yeah. But in the but in this case, it is in your um, saga, your main character's first name. uh, You go into her mind palace where she puts her clues together. But uh, the game like very clearly tells you like, hey, uh, while you're in here, the game is not paused. So choose carefully where you choose like when you decide to go in there and you're actually like in your mind in a cabin where you have like a X files CSI style crime scene wall that you connect with strings to connect clues. And your job is to solve crimes. Uh, So, so far very promising. I look forward to um, putting some more time into it uh, tomorrow night and then on Halloween as well, because it is uh, a game I can't play in front of my son, for sure, <laughs> and probably not my wife either. Uh, but so far, very promising. So I'm I'm excited to dive more into Alan Wake too. Uh, I do think it's interesting that it is. I, I, I'm pretty positive that it's actually your mind place. Mind place, Wake. okay. In, yeah, in my head, mind palace. There must be something that is the mind palace that I'm conflating. Yeah, but I think because everyone I think says mind palace at first, but I I think they very distinctly have called it your mind place. Yeah, probably that, I mean, for some yeah. copyright reason i would assume oh yeah maybe you might be right it could be a copyright thing i'm curious what the mind palace is in reference to or maybe that's just a, something. such a um maybe that is just such a popular, that was ideology yeah maybe that's just <laughs> such a popular thing or or something that holds a very specific meaning so they're trying to avoid that very specific meaning meaning it's a maybe. sherlock holmes thing that's what oh, it okay is. That makes sense. Okay. Um, cool, 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 cool. All right. So that yeah, that's Alan Wake too. Also, something else Kyle isn't playing: Football Club Twenty Four, EA Sports Football Club Twenty Four. Uh, a great friend uh, of the PSVG Podcast Network, Coach Mo Mo Mahoney, uh, hooked me up. Well, it didn't hook me up. He was selling copies of uh, Football Club and Madden. I didn't realize it was Ultimate Edition when I got it out of steel, so I gave him more <laughs> money for it because I felt guilty. Um, so I booted up, that up because uh, my son's into soccer now, and I've always been a soccer fan. I've just never put the time into playing it. Mm-hmm. And um, so I went and I did, uh, I think it's Ultimate League. Like I'm so unfamiliar with EA Sports, I don't know if it's called the ultimate team or ultimate league. Yeah. And I know it's very common for people who play EA sports. 
Uh, so I created my son because it didn't have my name in the game, but it had my son's name. Oh. Uh, so, you know, and he likes he had watch. So um, I did it. So you play the career as the player, not as the whole team. So mm-hmm. when I'm playing any games, I'm not swapping between players. I'm just trying to be a team player and play my position. And uh, it's been a lot of fun, uh, a lot of exciting moments. And uh, I just kind of forgot how much I really like FIFA. It was kind of like reinvigorated over my summer vacation mm-hmm. when I uh, played FIFA with my cousin and my brother again on the beach at the beach house. Uh, it made me want to play again. So I think uh, I'm going to spend a lot of time with this one. Uh, plays great. Plays like all the other FIFAs, though. So like, don't expect... Uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage or <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's been fun uh, still playing Mortal Kombat 1 playing um, the invasion mode uh, post did we talk did you finish this, the campaign since we talked I have not finished it yet no. okay so I can't talk to you about the cool stuff that happens sorry uh, that's okay I'll just cry about it tonight uh, <laughs> uh, Super Mario Wonder uh is a fantastic game that tests my patience with my oh. son every second that he plays okay. it. <laughs> and I will not play it with him now unless he is Nabbit, who cannot die. <laughs> so uh he has to play Nabbit when we play co-op. Uh <laughs> otherwise I'll just uh let him play. Uh it's actually that aside, it's uh just a brilliant Mario game. It's very fun and funny and and it's inventive if you can believe that for a 2d side scrolling mm-hmm. mario yeah um it's just a lot of fun so I, I don't have to say too much about that how many um worlds are you in uh you we've finished, only played together say? so i think we're in world two okay uh out of like was it five or something like that i think there's, I think sure. there's six is there six yeah I, yeah um, we played all three. We played three player when we started. Right? My okay. wife played with us and that was fun. And then I played with him together, me and him. And I really just want to bring it into my room and, and knock it just, out. Just, in a week. just finish it. <laughs> yeah. I've heard that it's not super challenging overall. There's definitely some challenging things, but I only, only saying that having played with a six year old. Right, right, right. So it might not be that bad. Yeah. Uh, but it's great. I love it. Uh, I'll save the big one for last. I guess you could argue this is a big one too. Uh, I got a PlayStation Vita. Yeah. What the heck? Vita. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know why. I just, we make, I make jokes about it. We've talked about it every once in a while, but I kind of was just like, I mean, if it, if I don't do it now, I'm not ever going to do it. Um, right. You know, one of the podcasts, how did this get played or now get played pod? Uh, one of the hosts, Matt Apodaca, had made a comment. He's like, Hey, I never played a Vita. And you know what? I just went and bought one. And I was like, you know what? That's what that is kicking the pants. I needed. <laughs> uh, so I did, and I got it. And then, uh, I was like, Oh no, uh, you can't buy games anywhere. Oh no, you can't buy anything for this anywhere. Nope. Well, nope. I did not do good <laughs> enough research. Uh, so I, for about a week, I spent a lot of time on Mercari and eBay and, Google and Am- not Amazon, I'll tell you that. Um, and I got a bunch of games, uh, mm-hmm. cheap. That was my goal. I didn't pay twenty more than twenty dollars for any game. Oh, that's good. Uh, so um, I'm happy about that. So I got Hot Shots Golf, Uncharted, PlayStation Battle Royale, All Stars Game, whatever that is called. I never played that. It seems like a fun thing. Need for Speed, Most Wanted, Lego Batman. I got for three bucks. Borderlands 2, Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation, um, and a couple other games, actually. And I downloaded Hell Divers last night. Mm. Um, and then I went to play Hot Shots Golf, and I couldn't play it because he, there was no memory card. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, great. And then I tried to find a memory card, and it is <laughs> impossible to find memory cards. <laughs> but then I found one, and then I got it. Two days early. I wasn't actually supposed to get it until tomorrow. And I got it yesterday, two days ago. And then the memory card didn't want to work. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I, I somehow, through persistence, I got it to work. It was not easy. But I did. 
And then I was able to fire it up, play some hot shots golf, and then play Uncharted. I had forgotten, completely forgotten about the gimmick of the Vita. And Uncharted really just takes full advantage of that. And I'm like not back complaining. And all that good stuff. Yeah, I know gimmick yeah. sounds bad, and there's definitely parts that are too gimmicky for my liking. Um, that being said, I was like, I can't believe I finally get to play this Uncharted game. I never got to play. Yeah. And I played and, every Uncharted game. Well, and it is a gimmick, like to be clear, like even if, like good or bad, it, like there are some games that use it well, but it's still a gimmick. But you don't have to use it, which I like. It yeah. says do this or this, which I think right. is nice. But there are definitely parts where they kind of make you use it, even so Josh, though they you, give yeah. you that. <laughs> so you say you've played every Uncharted game. Yeah. Have you played Uncharted Fight for Fortune? Should which I is know also that is? the Uncharted card game that is on Vita. Oh, no. Great. I have to play another one. Because <laughs> <laughs> when you said Uncharted, at first, I was like, well, I, I saw your picture, so I knew it was Golden Abyss. But don't, don't forget, Uncharted Fight for Fortune. That's an option, too. Do you consider Gwent a Witcher game? I mean, it's actually called Uncharted Fight for Fortune. Ugh, great. And isn't okay. Gwent well, called Gwent the Witcher card, like, card game or something is. like that? All right. Yeah. All right. I guess I have to at least try it. Uh, unless it costs like $100 and be there. <laughs> it might. Uh, actually, it no probably idea. does. <laughs> Uh, I'll say this. The one thing I did forget is it, how old this is. And the games uh, certainly feel more like a PSP game than they do a Switch game, which is fine. I just my expectations were higher. <laughs> right. Uh, but it's definitely very pixelated and, and uh, uh, not as crisp as I was expecting. I, I feel like there's probably some PSP games that are crisper uh, than the Vita games that I've experienced so far. Uh but my mind is open. I want to play some more, which I will. <laughs> uh, and then, Ali, why don't you talk about your games, and then we can talk about Spider-Man at the end together. That sounds good. Uh, so outside of what Josh has talked about, um, or what we've talked about together, uh, the only other video game that I played was uh, Moving Out 2. Oh. Uh, the partner and I played Moving Out 1. I think we actually, I think I got the platinum in Moving Out, the first Moving Out game, and it was great. Um, you know, that is you are part of a moving crew and you're going in and like very wackily wackily haphazardly like moving furniture out of people's homes into a moving truck um and you know you're breaking windows and throwing furniture and kooky stuff is happening it's basically you know um just another entry in those wacky co-op games that are meant to both make you laugh but also make you extremely frustrated with your, the people you're playing with yeah <laughs> um and moving out was a game that we were able like i said we got through we got the platinum it was challenging at parts but um overall not too bad moving out too oh goodness is it hard like <laughs> <they> really <laughs> amped up the difficulty um if you want to try to three star everything because there are like you know it has wacky um physics and while this happened in the original moving out, there'd be like to get a star, you'd have to like, like finish the all of your moving without breaking a window, right? But in this one, they have really strategically placed like things like right next to windows. So yeah. like even just trying to like pick them up, like almost always has you results in you breaking the window. So it, they're just it was so much more challenging to get all of the things done like in the time frame. Now they do have a bunch of features where you can like shut off like having to like fit every like they like you can make it so that when you put things in the moving truck like they disappear so it's just easier to get everything in the in the moving truck yeah. um and you know there's other things that you can adjust and change to make it easier or that um objects that require two people are lighter so you can easily move them with one person and, and things like that but so if you don't turn any of those things on the game is really really tough um and we've made some of our way through it we're still continuing to play it every once in a while when we sit down and play video games it is still the game we play but it definitely is like a map or two and then we're done uh because we're like okay that was oh, fun really? for what it is but if we kept playing we think we get really frustrated um so <laughs> it, it it was on ps plus extra in august if i recall so we didn't pay anything for it other than you know have it, since i already have extra um so it, it's i'm glad i have it uh but i don't think it's quite as much like just as fun as the first one was it does seem like they've definitely tried to up the skill required a little bit with this one so um, still, if you like those kind of wacky co-op games, uh, still definitely recommend it. it. It's not, like I said, don't enjoy it quite as much as the first one. Um, don't enjoy it as much as, um, oh shoot, what's the cooking one? Uh, uh, <laughs> that game that everyone plays yeah. that I never played. <sighs> 
cooking mama. Not not cooking cooking mama. (laughs) Definitely not cooking mama. Uh, (laughs) The game that I own, like three different versions of it across uh, platforms and have never played. (laughs) Right. Overcooked. Overcooked. Yeah. Uh, Or Divorce Kitchen, depending on. Divorce where you are yeah, yeah. yeah that's so I, I, I definitely like overcooked more um than moving out to um but like i said still definitely something that you can check out if you want to um in addition do you want me to talk about my board games too i do because i'm excited about uh the second one yeah okay oh i and i like the first one okay so i did get a chance to actually play two board games though since last we spoke the first one being a game i know josh has talked about on this podcast before um and that is calico um Calico is a game by Kevin idea. Russ with beautiful art by Beth Sobel. Josh is holding it up. Look, we... For everyone looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is which is nobody, just Josh and I. Um, just... Published by AEG, uh, but Calico is a one to four player game um, that is really just trying about to create the sewing the coziest quilt you can um, by and adding some buttons and put things to it and finding nice places for your cats to snuggle on the quilt. Um, is really what you're doing. And it's very, very simple overall as far as the premise of what you do in the game. But there is definitely a challenge as far as uh, deciding what direction you want to go and kind of how you want to do everything. So basically, at the start of the game, um, you have like your quilt piece that is out. There's some special scoring things that are placed out onto your quilt piece that talk about like, hey, like, you know, this to earn points, like this particular quilt piece needs to have like... um, these be surrounded by three sets of two different colors and or also three sets of two different patterns or this this piece needs to be um surrounded by two sets of three either colors or patterns and if you do both even better you get more points for it but then you're just kind of pulling pieces you know you have a a a bank of um quilt pieces and you would just draw one and you have one in your hand already. And then you're just kind of deciding, hey, where am I going to put this? How am I going to try to score these points? But in addition to that, then you have your cats that are hanging out and your cats like specific patterns. Um, so depending on the cat, you must like have a certain number, like say one cat really likes polka dots. And if you have five polka dotted patterns touching each other, that cat will then like get cozy and like lay on your quilt, which will be worth more points at the, at the end of the game. Um But also, once you get three of a color in a row or touching each other, you then get a button of that color, and that's worth extra points at the end of the game. And if you get all of the buttons, you get a bonus button, which is worth more points as well. But when you're pulling these quilt pieces, the quilt pieces are a color and a pattern. So then it is trying to figure out how do I like position these on the quilt in order to either fulfill what those scoring goals are that were started on the quilt or create a place where a cat would want to go or to create a place that is going to connect three colors so that you can get a button. And how do I do as many of those things as I can with every single piece that I'm picking up? So it is a really easy, like the general rules are pretty straightforward. Pick up a, pick up a piece, decide where you want to put it on your board. That's really all you have to do. That's what you do every single turn. Pick up a piece, decide where you want it to go. Pick up a piece, decide where you want it to go. Um, but trying then to figure out exactly like, okay, if I put this piece here, that means that I have to look for like this type of piece in the future and whatever that does or does not come up. Um, especially in a two-player game, there are so many pieces that like you never see that trying to like mitigate the randomness a little bit is very challenging to do. But you're both in that situation. So it's not like it's something where like your opponent is like getting all these really p- pieces that they need necessarily and you're not. Or if they are, it's just luck. Like sometimes that just might happen that way. Um, but overall, I really like it. It's a really quick game to like teach people. Like once you explain how it works, you're like, okay, let's go. Um, so it's pretty simple to teach. Um, it doesn't take very long to play at all. Uh, but there is interesting decisions to make in it, and that's kind of one of my favorite things about games are those those games that don't take too hard, take, don't take too long to teach, don't have a ton of rules, um, but then you're still making really, really interesting decisions. So Calico, I highly recommend. I think it's a great game. Yeah. Um, so if if you have the chance to to check it out or pick it up, I highly encourage it. Even if you're not much of a quote unquote board game person or hobby board game person, I think Calico is still an easy recommend. Um, what about you, Josh? I know you're quite a big fan of this game. Yes. Yeah, I really like it. I mean, we've only played it a few times, but um, I, I I like the simplicity of it. Um, it's a I think flat out. So, yeah. So we got it because uh, they made also made Cascadia. Mm-hmm. So we, or vice versa, we got one because of the other. 
So I think I like flat out games as a, a in general, as far as like their type of games, uh, where it's like deceivingly complicated, but it's like you can still have fun um, playing uh, as a casual game as well. Uh, and yeah, I mean, my wife likes it because of the cats and the patterns and all that too. So it has a nice blend of of uh, uh, themes for people who are kind of looking for something more. Uh, I guess cozy now is the new like buzzword uh, in board games or in video games. So yeah. it definitely has a cozy feel to it. It does. If you had to pick between Cascadia and Calico, which would you rather play? I like Cascadia better, but I uh, I've only I haven't played it as many times as we played Calico, so I'd want to play it a few more times. I think. Yeah, I would agree. I do prefer Cascadia over Calico, but I still, if somebody was like, "Hey, do you want to play Calico?" I would one hundred percent say yes, like every time. Oh yeah, of like, course, yeah, yeah. So Calico, really, really good. Uh, so the next board game I played then is a game that I have been trying to get for a really long time and have been sold out everywhere. And about two weeks ago, I got a notification that they got a restock on Amazon. So I was just like, nice. let's do it. And I ordered and received Heat, Pedal to the Metal. Uh, Heat is a game that actually won the Dice Towers Game of the Year for last year. It just got announced back in August. Um, and Heat is a game by from um, Days of Wonder, uh, dis- designed by asgard oh boy grinrude and <laughs> daniel Pedersen, if i recall correctly and i'm saying that correctly but it is a racing game and it's a pretty simple hand management racing game where uh, the game comes with four different maps uh, and then you just basically are sitting down you have kind of your starting cards and your car on the track and then you have um, kind of your deck of cards that you start with that are Zero, one, two, three. Well, you have like one zero. So one, two, three, and four. You have four of each of those cards. And then you have a zero, a five, and a heat card. And that's kind of what you, in the basic game, that's kind of what you start with in your quote unquote deck. Um, And then you also have heat cards that you have like a pile of those that are your engine, like in the middle of your little player board. So you have like your deck that you draw from on the left. In the center are your heat cards. And then on the right is your discard pile. On your turn, you just draw. You, you have seven cards in your hand, and then you have to kind of decide what gear you want to be in. If you um, When you start the game, you're in first gear. Um, you can go up to two, three, two or three on your first turn. But basically, kind of how the game works is first you pick about whether you're going to up or downshift. If you upshift one or downshift one, nothing happens. You just adjust kind of like where you are um, on, your, on the little shift um, track. If you want to go shift up to or shift down to, then, then you have to spend heat from your heat deck. Um, in order to do that, so you have to put a heat into your discard pile. Um, and managing that heat is kind of like the key to the entire game because doing things that are quote unquote better um, are going to tend to cost you heat. And if you run out of heat, um, then your car, then you spin out and you kind of like get like set back a little bit, kind of have to reset what you're doing. So managing that heat is really important. Um, but then the reason though that that gear track is important is that indicates the number of cards you are required to play on your turn. So if you are in second gear, you have to play two cards, and those two cards are how you move forward. In general, then, it seems like playing more cards is better because you want to go faster, but there are advantages to being behind because by being in hind, you get advantage, like you get like an ability called adrenaline, which lets you like get a cooldown factor, which lets you kind of put heat cards back into your center deck to like increase the amount of heat you have available to work with. Um, or it also is the only way that you can like um, drift is like, or not drift draft. There we go. Is like, you can draft past cards, but only if you start behind them. Um, so there are advantages to being behind. And of course, as with all racing games, you're going to have corners and you have to actually be compensating and thinking about like what you're going to do in the corners. Uh, because once you go, every corner that's on the map has a number associated with it. And for however many spaces beyond that number you move when you go through the corner, um, that's how much heat you have to like use from your car. So if one of the corners, the number is three and you are like, you, you play two cards, those two cards are a four and a three. So you go seven, you know, when you pass that corner, you actually have to burn like four heat from your car. So it's really kind of important to think about, okay, do I want to upshift? Do I want to downshift? Like how many cards do I want to be forced to play um, out of the cards that are in my hand? And like, there's no, uh, there's no like opting out of like not playing something. Um, You have to play things all the time. So maybe you're like, okay, I know I have a, I have my one zero and two ones and a two in my hand. So, you know, though, since I, you know, though I have to play four cards and then the corner is only a three, 
these four cards together are only a four and I'm happy to burn the one heat. I'm going to just stay in my fourth gear. So that way next turn, I don't have to spend anything so that I can like just go really fast after that. So it's kind of like managing all of that good stuff. Um, the first race is two, like most of the races are two laps around the tracks. Um, and you're just kind of going back and forth, like doing this thing of, of playing out your cards, trying to manage what gear you're in, trying to figure out how much heat to use or not heat to use, how to restore heat back to things and not spin out. Um, and I will say we've only played one round of it so far or one game of it. I did win, but I won by exactly one space. Oh. So the game seems really, really well balanced since your decks are all the same. And yes, you're drawing cards. So there's a little bit of um, randomness there. But and then you could kind of choose to discard some cards, but not all cards. So there is a little bit of like how you manage your hand and like how you what you do to try to give yourself the ability to um, draw the best cards possible. And the thing is, is the only way you can get heat back into your engine in the middle of the board is you have to have heat in your hand so it is one of those things that you can't move it from your discard to your hand you have to hit so you kind of want to get heat in your hand but also then it removes one card that could actually propel you forward so it is this interesting like there are really thoughtful decisions to make but overall the general base game is very straightforward after that though if you want to you can there's a whole bunch of modules in it to like build like custom cars so that your cars have specific abilities or like the engines are different or the wear on the tires are different or whatever you know different abilities you want to add to your cars you can bring weather into the mix there's all of these different modules you can add to add complexity to the game once you understand it uh so overall heat like from the entry level really really basic straightforward to learn ability to add a ton of cool stuff to it down the line i think it's a really fun game i'm not a usual huge huge racing game fan we do have formula d or formula day depending on who you talk to um and i do like that game uh but that's that's rolling dice so there's so much randomness in that game um that it sometimes you feel like you're just like a little out of control or you got super unlucky whereas this there is a little bit of randomness but there's far more ways to mitigate it and you also kind of know what you're committing to most of the time when you make a risky move um so overall if you have the chance to get heat i would definitely recommend it this game is obviously easily built for you know a number of expansions it, like i said it comes with two maps that are double-sided so four maps total uh but i have to imagine that days of wonder is going to continue to support this because this like ticket to ride could have so many expansions just based yeah. off of kind of what it is so uh it is actually ranked all the way up to number 58 already on the board game geek top 100 so uh if you have the chance and are you know considering a racing game i would definitely recommend heat i think it might be the one we like the most of the racing games we have um so i would i would definitely recommend it nice all right, Josh, do you want to talk about Seven Wonders at all, or do you just want to jump into to the spot of man? No, we played Seven Wonders correctly this time, so that's all I want to talk about. <laughs> and is it better than when you played it incorrectly? I think it's still, it's just as good. It's just more uh, aware of what we're drafting now. Uh, but it was fun. It was, it's been a while since we played it, so it was nice to play it again. Awesome. So, uh, hey, Spider-Man. Hey, Spider-Man. <laughs> What what are yeah. your thoughts on on the Spider Man there, Josh? Boy, oh boy, what are my thoughts on the Spider Man? That's great. Uh, I didn't think they could do it. I didn't think they could make it better, and they did somehow. They somehow they made it better. They made like a near perfect game better. Yeah. Uh, I I think it, it was. It's been some time since I played Spider Man um, and Miles Morales, so I was a little dip, bit like separated from that feeling, and. I think if people who play it know what I mean by that feeling, it's just has a very specific feeling to the game itself. Um, uh, uh, just everything about it feels great. The story is so good. They, they just like, they write a very good story. They fill it. They fill the game with enough things that are going on um, that you can choose to interact with or not while you're experiencing the story. And none of it, uh ever feels at least to me unnecessary or um something i don't want to do uh i think like i think back to like i know a lot of people compare it to batman and like 
uh, obviously it is like the spiritual successor to the Batman Arkham games, but there were so many things in the Batman games that I just had no interest in doing because of how tedious it was and any of the Riddler stuff just felt like a headache to participate in, whether it's like Riddler trophies or Riddler challenges. Uh, none of that stuff felt fun. And even in this one, I'll give you, there's definitely things like that, but chasing a, a Craven's drone, right? It sounds like it would be boring. It's one of the most exciting things in the game because you're just like, flying through New York City and each one flies differently and you're following in its jet stream and and they added these the wings in this game now so you're not just swinging you're actually using wing gliders under your arms like a flying squirrel um it just feels really good uh and it's great uh i'm having the best time with it my son is watching me play it. He is having the best time with it. He changed his costume, his Halloween costume. <laughs> he was Master Chief, and then he decided he wants to be Spider-Man now, so he wore a Master Chief to his after-school care program for Halloween, and he's now choosing to be Spider-Man for Halloween. Um, it's just kind of a uh, just a really good, well-done game, and I really enjoy that they've they made subtle changes to the mythology, the the I guess canon mythology, the core mythology of Spider-Man. So, you know, in this game, well, it's not a spoiler. I I, I won't say it though. Uh, but it, it certain like Venom is not Eddie Brock. I can say that. So Venom is not Eddie Brock, and that's how comic book nerds and Spider-Man like fans know Venom is this character. Peter Parker's bully, Eddie Brock, which explains a lot about the Venom character, but that is not who it is, and it's fine. Uh, and they they make some small changes in the game, and it's fine for me. Like, I actually like it because it's not... I wasn't expecting it to happen, so it was actually genuinely, like, surprising. Not the Venom thing, because it's in, like, every ad, I think, but... Right. Or at least hinted at, or if you played the first Spider-Man, you know. But uh, a lot of a lot of things did surprise me while playing, um, and are still surprising me post game. So uh, I, I did complete uh, the game itself. I was say I thought I saw that you had posted the the yes. credits rolling. I did. I finished the game, um, main story, and now I'm I'm still swinging around New York, doing cleanup, if you will. Uh, it has, uh, I would say, the last third of the game is some of the most challenging combat uh, I've played in a long time. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they really ramp it up without without giving any spoilers. Uh, but yeah, I love it. How about you? What's your been? What's how? What's your experience been with Spider Man so far? So you know, I. I I just fell asleep. No, I didn't. I'm just trying to think about I'm 20. So my completion percent says 25%. I've not been able to play anywhere near as much as I would like to have been able to play. I'm at 70% right now. Okay. And sometimes I sit down to play a game and I'm like, okay, I'm excited to play this game. I'm looking forward to playing this game. Um, But I, I, I know what I'm going to get, right? Like yeah. this is going to be more Spider-Man. And for the most part, this is more Spider-Man. Oh yeah. However, having not played since, you know, Miles Morales, I just forgot how fun it is to be Spider-Man. In these yeah. games. Like it is just so <laughs> fun. And is the writing perfect? No. Is the story perfect? No. Is it, you know, I don't think there's anything here other than maybe the locomotion that is like, top of the game right like that is the best of the best that it is you're not going to find anything better in games the locomotion i would say is up there i think the combat pretty fun but probably some slightly better combat here and there but you put all those things together in this package and like every time i like anytime i sit down to play it for the most part i'm just like grinning like the whole time it's just so much fun to play 
And that's not to excuse. I know that other people, at least online, people have talked about bugs. I, I've only had one bug the whole time, and it was someone yeah. who I had webbed to a wall, like, way, way high up on a building, and they just kept, like, sl- going slightly back and then slamming back into the wall, like, over <laughs> and over and over again. So it was, like, it was pretty funny. But that's, like, the only bug that I've seen the whole time f- yeah. for me. So I've been lucky as far as that goes. But the music, the sense of, like, scale in the world, like you talked about, having the web wings to use to, like, glide, like, every, like, any time I get a mission and I see that it's, like, 2500 meters away or whatever that's I'm like, awesome yes let's yeah. go like, I'm like <laughs> yeah. this is gonna be so much fun to get there right like yeah and how like as you're swinging through the city like instead of like as i was just talking about how i love the check boxes of ubisoft games like this gives them to you but it but much more organically right like you're going through and it's like hey you're in this part of the city so now this thing is yeah. here or her. and since i want to swing everywhere and because the locomotion is so fun like it makes all these things generate on my map as i'm going through them so it's not yeah. like a go to a tower un- unveil everything it's like hey i'm swinging through this thing became available to me but since i want to swing everywhere um it's kind of like these things are populating for me as far as it go- they go so Overall, I'm really enjoying my time with it. Um, you know, I have some quibbles but here and there, but nothing major. Like, overall, I just, I'm having a ton of fun. I wish that, I don't know, right now with where I am, um, I, I enjoy playing as both Peter and Miles. Like, I don't think there's one that I think is necessarily, quote unquote, better or superior yeah. than the other. But I just like the Miles character more. I get it. Yeah. I mean, I th- I think there's two different types of people. There's people who gravitate towards Peter and yeah. people who gravitate towards Miles. Um, uh, there will be not. Yeah. There's points where it, you'll want to be one versus the other. But right. I think you're right. Like, um, and that's just narratively, uh, at least for me. My right. my son kept saying, change his suit, change his suit. And I'm like, no, right now he's this suit buddy. And yeah. he's like, but why? And I'm like, because he's bad right now. And I don't want to <laughs> change his suit to make him look good. But why, yeah. daddy? Well, because I want to remember that he's doing bad things. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And, you know, like I said, it's not anything against, like, the Peter character. Like, I think this this Peter character is totally fine. Like, I, I, yeah. I like him overall. I just prefer Miles. Um, and even from a like combat standpoint, it's not that I necessarily prefer Miles. I just like my like the character of Miles in the yeah, game better. Like, he's I also a think, fresher character. He's yeah. not like this Peter Parker that has been it's essentially sixty years old right. on on page. Yeah, like he's new to like a lot of people. Like his entry point. Yeah, and maybe it is because I played Miles Morales much more more recently, and that game, yeah. like I thought, was a really nice introduction to him. Like you know, so maybe that's why. Yeah. Um, but I just would rather hang out with him in the game than I would Peter. Sure. But overall, like I said, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I am not going to start Alan Wake two until I finish this game. Makes sense. Um, so, but yeah, I'm 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 really really enjoying it. So. Um, with that, Josh, you know, we, we have a couple months left of the year. Like I said, this episode comes out on Halloween, which leaves us November and December. How locked in, and you don't need to say what they are. How long, how locked in do you think your top five games of the year are at this point? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know what we have left. If anything's coming out in November. Something has to be coming out in November. And just well, I mean, Call of Duty. I'm not including Call of Duty. Okay. Because uh, I forgot that it was coming out this year. <laughs> so I know, right? my, my hype level is low. Um, I think I'm probably 80% locked in. Okay. Are there things from earlier this year that you haven't been able to play that you still want to? Oh, for sure. I would really have to look at that list and yeah. see what no, I, hear I need to spend more time in. But um, there are certainly games now. I think what I sh- what I want to do is I'll probably look up um, some people's like top 10 lists and look at those games that I haven't played. Mm-hmm. And, and if we have them, make sure to get some time in. Right. Um, but even like... The Dead Space remake, I, I put no time into that, and I really want to play that like so badly because I love that game. Um, so there's a lot, there's probably a lot of games I want to get some time into. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, uh, oh boy, it's my radar is like all wonky. 
it it's tough because i do still want to go back like i want to finish final fantasy 16 because i never, haven't yeah, yeah. finished that yet um i do actually want to play resident evil 4 remake and i do want to play dead space um i know this i'm probably the only one uh i really look i'm still really looking forward to avatar frontiers of pandora uh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, we'll I see mean, you know that sure. might be a thing i do want to play mario brothers wonder um the mario rpg remake oh, yes. comes out in november um is uh yeah call of duty is like a dragon gaiden the man who raised his name is that in november or is that in january or is that a different game that's in january a different that, there was one that just came out but that was uh ishin oh yeah ishin was last year oh, just, oh maybe just came on game pass or it's, something? yeah it's on sale now and it's on game pass now oh, and things okay. like that so yeah but like a dragon gaiden the man who raised his name on this list it says that november why did i think that got pushed to january but maybe it's different yakuza it games coming out in january <laughs> it could be it certainly might have there's so many of those games but um so that i still want to um go back and well but then i'm not gonna play those what am i saying i want to but i just know it's not gonna happen um i do still want to f- also play more sea of stars i haven't really talked about it on the uh, podcast yeah, because um i haven't played as much of it as i want to but i really have enjoyed what i've played a bit um so that's something i still want to play more also uh the new uh ufc 5 uh, i've actually yeah. heard really good things about i have it downloaded to play, do my 10 hour trial but i haven't started it yet so that's on there josh this year is just bonkers there's so much stuff there's a lot going on yeah i don't know but anyway all right so with that let's move on to talking about some topics of things going on in the board game and video game world josh anything any of these multiple board game topics that i've listed here that you would be Ugh. interested in talking about I mean, we might as well talk about Larkana, right? Because nobody's talking about this game. No, nobody's talking about <laughs> Larkana at all. So, uh, in skeptical news, uh, I'm <laughs> we'll talk about Ravensburger's plans for reprints and um, promos and all these kinds of things that they're doing. So, originally, we were supposed to get a reprint at the start of this month. Uh, and for whatever reason, uh, for maths that i don't understand yeah. they were like oh no we're gonna release more so we'll do it later mm-hmm. okay well why don't you just do your reprints when you planned and reprint more later right 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 uh, but you know they really completely um there's got to be a word is it gonna be ravensburger they really ravensburgered this up <laughs> um there's got to be a word for it uh, uh, i'll i'll think of it um, but yeah, they really messed this up so bad. So, you know, I'm trying to decide how I want to approach Lorcana for myself in right. the future. I stopped. We play. Wait, I have enough to play, right? But I don't have enough to collect. I don't have enough to build uh, decks that I want to build. Right. Um, and I pay too much for what I have, right? I didn't, I think I got very few things at retail price. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how many they're going to have to reprint for it to become available at, repr- at retail price. Right. Uh, but I'll say that they are trying, they're trying to uh, limit what scalpers can get by making sure that these reprints are not any different than the first prints, yep. which does, you know, which means the value will go down every time uh, the first set is reprinted they're also changing how their promo cards work so people can't ask fourteen thousand dollars for a d23 mickey mouse which i like that they can do that yep as well um but all the, all that means nothing if you're not reprinting it enough yeah and ravensburger is ultimately going to make the decision of uh i mean i can't imagine the person, someone didn't get fired for how much money they lost. They must have lost hundreds of thousands of dollars by not having these cards available because they're not making that money. Scalpers right. are. Yeah. And in local card start shops who are charging three times f- to, and higher, the MSRP, right. like Ravensburger, is not making that money. So the only people who lose here is Ravensburger yeah. because they lost brand loyalty f- from a lot of people. They lost a whole new 
fan base of people who were just getting into it because it was Disney and had never played a TCG before. They're losing all that. Like people are going to Pokemon or not playing at all. Mm -hmm. People have been giving up. I'm in the Reddit threads, I see. Um, So I I just really, uh, for me as a player, I would like them to fix this. And I would like uh, them to to provide us with more, more cards. And that being said, I think my pro- my one of my problems with this is their reprint is kind of coinciding with like the launch of their second set. Yeah, it is. And that makes no sense also, but I'm not going to buy the second set necessarily before I buy the first set. At least in my head, I would like to have the foundation of a deck before I'm trying to buy new sets. Right. Um I also don't like the theme of the new set, but that's that might that's might just be a me thing, uh, which is Floodborne. Uh, so yeah, so we we gotta wait till mid November now instead of early October for reprints to hit the shelves. We don't know if that means local card shops first again or retail or all together. Uh, but uh, that also being said, they're going to be focusing on their OP program, which focuses on fan events and competitive play, uh, which really suffered again. I've been reading a lot of competitive play events started at like 40 people and it dwindled to like seven people per night because right. there's just no availability yep. to buy new cards and play. So people aren't even showing up for that. And then they'll be streamlining their promo cards to, uh, remove or change the wording so i think it will say convention promo or some sort of like cp maybe or something instead of specific conventions uh but it will still be obviously like you can only get this one at this convention so it's a little it's not as transparent as they think uh how about you has has your have you waned or wavered on Lokarna at all are you going to try to play it uh what do you think I am not, I mean, I haven't bought any yet because I haven't been able to find any and I'm not going to pay more than retail for it. So I've bought (laughs) zero of it so far. It is fascinating because when you go into, you know, like the Lorcana subreddit and things and places like that, there are people who claim, maybe they're not, maybe they're being disingenuous, but there are people who claim to be like FLGS owners and saying like, here's my experiences trying to order this, right? Like, yeah. I understand the hesitation maybe from Robinsberger's part to say, hey, you know, we don't want to overproduce. We don't want to overprint because if we don't want to be stuck with a bunch of boxes and cases of cards. Right. Yeah. But these people like these FLGSs are pre-ordering and they're getting like less than half of what they're requesting. Yeah. So you you know you can make more like you <laughs> right, know you can there. print more. Right. And that's just where it's really fascinating to me that it's taken this long. And maybe what Magic does and what Hasbro does with Magic is just that is just so amazing that they're able to do that. Because I feel like they're able to turn turn out product like nobody's business, right? Like, And you never see Magic cards on clearance or close no, out. Never. No. So and maybe someday, you know, that that scale will tip. That could happen. Sure. But I just really feel like they have really missed an opportunity and i think i don't know if they'll be able to recover from it because like you said now that the bait the restock of one is of the first set is coming out with basically at the same time as the second set's going to so people are going to be confused like which one do i get do i have to get the first before i can get the second why wouldn't i get the first if the set if i don't like why would i skip the first and just get the second like yeah it, it's going to be a tough position to be in and even not having competitive events until Q2 next year seems like a miss. Like this does seem like something they should have had available earlier like, and ready yeah. to go earlier. And having these honestly, like at Gen Con where they had the first cards available, they should have had a tournament. And the fact that they didn't, I think just really shows how much they're kind of dropping the ball with this. And I, and I do think that they may have, irreparably damaged what it means like Lorcana the game and I, I think people are going to move on because it's just not worth it anymore and I think you'll still have people buy the cards but purely to collect them not to play them right not not to mention things like this with now they're just releasing single 
yeah, villainous, villainous expansions. Um, I think they're kind of bungling that too. Uh, yeah. Or re releasing villainous with one less uh, villain, but charging more money and coming like, yeah. like I, I don't know what they're doing right now because it just doesn't seem to make sense um, when you have a brand that big. Unless unless Disney's the ones pressuring them to to release things differently. Yeah, I mean maybe I I don't I don't know. It that doesn't that's true, seem but, like it, but right. I I mean I I otherwise I don't understand why they're doing what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, speaking of Lorcana, unless there's anything else you want to say related to that. Uh, I, no. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, another place that Lorcana had had cards at and was available was at Essen. Um, and Shocking Essen's, how they had stock. I don't I know, get right? it. <laughs> uh, at Essen Spiel, uh, which is the biggest board game convention in the world, happened over the last month while we were, since we last recorded. And this was actually the largest Eschen Spiel in its 40, 40 years. Um, or excuse me, largest in quite some time, but not quite as big as pre-pandemic. Uh, they sure. had 193,000 people um, who visited the board game convention. Now, an important thing to note uh, that though that 193,000 visitors is turnstile turns. E- like if you add oh, the turnstiles turns yeah, for each yeah. day of the not convention. Not unique visits. So just it's not visits. unique visitors. So it could be like one person might be four of those. Yeah, 193,000. Uh, but it still averages to roughly 50,000 people a day. Saturday is definitely the biggest, the busiest day. Sunday, the least busy because that's their family day. Um, it is down from the 2019's pre-pandemic attendance of 209,000. Uh, but they did say that, you know, by talking or here listening to reports from people who were there, watching videos from people who were there, uh, you know, a lot of people were like, hey, this is like Essen is like, this is like, it is back, right? Like this is really the first year it's felt like um, a return to form as far as Essen goes. So um, yeah, they, they did uh, come under some, a little bit of fire because they did, you know, use some AI generated art yeah. in their, <laughs> in their marketing and their tickets uh-huh. and things like that. Uh, but you know, maybe people in Germany just think about that differently than we do. So overall though, very successful Essen. Josh, what do you, what, do you think you'll ever go to an Essen? I would love to. I mean, if I was to go to Germany, I would try to plan it around an Essen time. Oh, right. For sure. <laughs> so, um, and one of the reasons Essen is such a big deal is it like kind of gives us the insight into like what is coming down the pike as far as games go and what kind of is the hot games, if you would. Uh, and the German magazine Fair Play actually measures the quote unquote hotness of the games um, at the spiel uh, where people can just kind of fill out this form to talk about. Uh, to discuss and, and let them know about the games they're most interested in the games they've been seeing kind of all of those good stuff uh what's funny though too is if you go back and look over the last couple of years uh some pretty major games have kind of been in the top group um like in 2021 like the number one game was arc nova that was kind of the hot game and obviously arc nova is still really really big uh in 2022 cat in the box cat, was like what the big is game. cat in the box <laughs> What is this game? <laughs> Are you asking that seriously? I am sincerely asking this. <laughs> okay. Well, Cat in the Box, I mean, it is a uh, a, a game people really, really like. Uh, have you played it? I have not played it. It is nothing about this game it says to me that this is a, a 7.6 board game geek. <laughs> <laughs> Um, cause it's, a, it's actually like, all I know about it is it's a trick taking game. That's like the only thing I know about it. And that, um, the colors of your cards matter, but that the colors of the cards aren't determined until you play them or something like that. Oh my goodness. Um, I guess I'm going to have to play this game, huh? Yeah. And then you, and you are, it's kind of, it's kind of like a trick taking and a, a bidding game. Cause I think not only do you like have to win tricks, you also like place like bets about how many uh, tricks you're going to win. That will not fly in this house. <laughs> so it's kind Maybe of like I a, won't play this game. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of a, a combination of those two things of both like a trick taking game, but then also trying to, you know, figure out how many tricks you're going to win. <laughs> and then as a result of that, like trying to like adjust your card colors to ensure that you are going to end sure. winning the number of tricks you said you were going to win and that kind of stuff. So okay. um People really like it. Like I said, people people think it's a cool thing. Um, I've never played it. I didn't actually know that Cat in the Box um, was basically a 
I think it's a remake of another game. Okay. So, but I could be wrong. But I feel like it is. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, Cat in the Box. People love that game. There's, you know, because there is Cat in the Box. And then, which is 2020. And then 2022 was uh, deluxe, the deluxe edition of Cat in the Box. And I believe next year we were getting the colossal edition of Cat in the Box. Because... It gets bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. The cat in the box gets larger. Um, so, yeah. So, that obviously a game people still really love. It won some stuff uh, at the Dice Tower Awards last year, for last year. Um, but the Touring Machine, which has been really big. Um, Splendor Duel that people love. So, you know, overall, pretty good job of kind of determining, you know, what are hot games. So, for this year, the hot games that were discussed, and when they do this now, they divide it by what halls. Because at the spiel, certain types that they group get to, they group games together or companies together by the types of games they produce. Um, so like companies that do like a lot of like Ameritrash and like minis and things like that, like are in separate halls from like the get companies that do like a lot of Euros and things like that. Um, so in hall three and four, um, the top game was Revive. Um, and the second hottest game was Darwin's Journey. Um, and then some other kind of popular games on there. Five Towers was one. The Guild of Merchant Explorers. Uh, the White Tower. And Earth um, kind of all were in that top 10. Um, Josh, is your, I don't know if you're looking at the list of the top 10 from this yeah. year from those halls. Any games in there stick out to you as like, hey, this is something I really would want to get to my table sooner rather than later? I've heard good things about Revive. I'm curious to look it up. Um, I think Darwin's Journey. I feel like I slept on that Kickstarter. Right? You have that, I believe. Did you get? Did you back that? I do have it. I haven't played it yeah. yet, though. Um, and you didn't mention it yet, but uh, uh, Tribes of the Wind and Bonsai had caught my attention uh, while watching some like Essen videos on Dice Tower. Yeah. So then, um, as Josh was just talking about in halls one, two, five, and six. So the other halls, uh, uh, the highest the hottest game was a game called far away which i'm i'm not familiar with that game at all uh but then yeah tribes of the wind was on there um bonsai is a game that people have been talking a lot about uh lacrimosa is a game i still really want to play um it looks really good sea salt and paper they kind of a lot of people were saying that's kind of like the new hot small game um the game that you can just kind of take anywhere with you um and it looks pretty good so yeah, there's definitely a lot of games on here that I'm very interested in. Like I said, I do obviously have Darwin's Journey, so clearly I need to play it. Revive is a game that's kind of on the to-buy list, but uh, when I actually went to go buy games recently, um, I did not get Revive and instead got Dune Imperium. So I do have Dune mm. Imperium now, but I haven't played it yet. Nice. But, um, and then I have um, Tickets to Ride Legacy coming too here soon. Ooh. So in November, in theory, sometime. So in theory yeah in theory but tribes of the wind lacrimosa kind of the two on that second list that i I really would like to try so cool anything else about uh essen josh no i love it more essen cool anything else in the board game world you want to discuss i just looked at we're already 90 minutes into our episode not not, not quite we did have a little bit of technical (laughs) difficulty in there so uh i mean uh, should i talk about saw i guess it's halloween yeah Um, let's talk about saw josh uh we i think we should also mention i believe i want to just check before i say this um uh speaking of of that uh i believe i saw yeah um there's more info on halloween by emerson uh, Matsuchi, yeah, uh, for his board game. So if you want to go check out um, uh, some info on Halloween, the board game, which is two to four players, etc., uh, you know I'll be getting it because it's an Emerson game. So I'll be able to talk about it at some point. Um, but it looks it looks like a fun kind of uh, clue, hidden movement kind of game. Uh, but we also get saw the jigsaw trials coming. Uh, is it already out? Coming soon to Kickstarter? Coming soon to Kickstarter, I believe. Well, they really missed that Halloween deadline. I know, right? And the, and the movie being in theaters, they really missed that, uh, which doesn't give me great confidence <laughs> uh, in the game. 
but yeah, Saw the Jigsaw Trials uh, is a board game that is uh, coming out from Lionsgate, Twisted Pictures, and Iconic Studios. I'm not unfamiliar with. Uh, one to six players, 30, oh boy, 30 minutes for two players, 90 minutes for more players. Um uh, I guess that playtime makes me feel a little bit better about it. doesn't mean it's good, though. Uh, but yeah, uh, as Kyle wrote in our notes, we don't really know much about the game, uh, which is fun. Uh, it's just fun to see. Well, one thing, it's fun to see that there's more. Like, we just got Texas Chainsaw Massacre, right? Just hit the shelves Yep. Uh, as a board game. Um, we're getting Halloween. Uh we have frequently talked about these games on our when we used to do our like fun games of like what we would like to see, how we would make them kind of things. We've certainly talked about games in the horror genre uh, for sure. And yes, the Kickstarter campaign launches on Halloween. Yeah. So I guess they kind of, kind of hit it, uh, which will be good for them. Uh, so it says players will compete to survive both jigsaws, traps and, uh, that was created by opposing players. That's interesting. That is interesting. All while managing their own health, scrounging for resources, and attempting to be the last one to survive. Cards, which represent most of the resources and components in the game, can be combined to create more than 2,000 unique and ghoulish traps. This is from Dicebreaker. Uh, characters' health is represented by interlocking cardboard pieces. Those are called puzzle pieces. Uh as they write literally jigsaw puzzle cardboard tiles that can be interchanged as traps and hazards. So it sounds like, uh, I, I honestly write reading it sounds like that of winter a little bit minus the traps aspect, uh, as far as like the resources and playing kind of against each other to a certain degree. I'm curious if they'll make like, if that's mandatory, if you'll be rewarded for helping each other possibly. Um, I'm thinking movie wise as in the movies they don't all they don't always turn on each other, but most of them do right um but it sounds pretty cool actually now the more I read about it what do you think is this uh turn you onto a horror board game? I do think it you know it sounds kind of cool in looking at the pictures on the dicebreaker site I'm like it that, yeah. is kind of neat how they have like those jigsaw pieces for the characters and it looks like maybe you flip them over or change them out if somebody gets hurt potentially yeah that maybe? dude clearly does not have a leg in one yeah, of these <laughs> right uh as well as having you know the the cards there and some of the traps that you know exist so it does look more interesting than i thought it was going to be i thought this might just be kind of a you know cashing in on an ip uh, but yeah. it looks like some serious work actually went into this and that they're trying to be um, true to to the ip and to what it means to be a saw thing um i don't know that i will play it still because i have don't know that the world in which i would ever get my partner to play this game uh but <laughs> it's kind of weird that like all the cards just have like a, a severed hand on them <laughs> you know <Yeah>. like <laughs> so but yeah it, it's kind of neat uh do you think launching the kickstarter on halloween is probably i guess if it's not gonna be out on halloween this is the second best thing to yeah because maybe it'll be out next year on halloween exactly so you know second best way to handle that i suppose uh but yeah overall i will keep an eye on this because i'm interested to see what the result is though i don't know um if this is a game i will play sure so uh josh is there another horror ip that you'd love to see a board game because obviously like you talked about we have halloween there's been like you know other movie board games for horror games is there one that you, yeah. you think should be out there that isn't i mean yeah it ties into uh magic because the magic of the gathering is doing a secret layer evil dead drop yeah and i would love to see an evil dead board game uh because that's a universe now it's not just um bruce campbell we have other movies now in that universe so they could just uh go on a dead eye killing spree kind of game where you can play like a mansions of madness style game where the deadites are played by uh app or a player and everyone else is sur- trying to survive you could do all the ashes versus them you could do lots of different things um i think evil dead is a game uh 
and that has been had a lot of video game adaptations that have never done it justice. Uh, and I know there is, is there an Evil Dead board game, but it's done by like Monolith or something? I think so, yeah. Which means it's not good. Um, <laughs> wow, <harsh. laughs> and I think it's Evil Dead 2, actually. Yeah, Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2, I believe, are both. It's Jasco, I think. Yeah, it's Jasco. Okay. Um, and I know, like, uh, it, one of our listeners in PSVG backed Evil Dead Kickstarter or, or whatever it was under and just had the worst time, whether they never delivered or never delivered on time. Um, so, I mean, I think we're good. We should, we, we could get a good, nice, like full, full budget, actual retail release, not Kickstarter version of it, or maybe buy a company who has like their stuff together. Evil Dead 2, the official board game. It's a 2.2 on Board Game Geek. It's well, there wait, you go. One, wait, 1. 1.5 out of 5. Oof, okay. Yeah. So it's not it's not hard to play and it's bad. <laughs> that That's rough. That is unfortunate. So now I will agree with you. Evil Dead does seem like it should be represented in board games far better <laughs> than it is then. All right. Well, Josh, we're going to stick to that theme, but we're going to make the move to video games if that's, if that's cool with you. Yeah, it's going to be a weird transition. I 100% guarantee it. <laughs> oh, but it's not because you know why, Josh? Barbarian is getting a video game adaptation. Yes, the horror movie Barbarian is getting um, a video game developed by Diversion 3 Entertainment, which is the same studio behind Friday the 13th and Evil Dead. <laughs> um, they are now going to be making a Barbarian game. Uh, How, though? <laughs> but they have given no details as to what this game is actually going to be. Ugh. Now, Josh, I, you know, Barbarian, one of the few horror movies that I actually have watched recently. So I've seen yeah. Barbarian. Uh, what in the world is this video game? <laughs> That's what I, that's what I meant about bad transition. The right. transition was not in question. Sorry, it was the quant- quality of the transition product. I I don't know what the heck this is going to be. There's no way it's going to be good. Because um, this this isn't for, a one versus for many, many right? reasons, huh? This isn't another one versus many game. Is it like where one? It's going to have to be right. It's. I can tell you what it is. I don't want to spoil Barbarian. I can so, probably guess what it is. Yeah. I mean, I, I, is it going to be, okay, to try to be as vague as spoilers as possible, <laughs> is it going to be the one is the one thing and the then everyone's trying mother. to escape the lair? Yeah. Is that what you think it's going to be? It's. It has to be. What are they going to do? You can't That's make true. this. Into, you cannot... <laughs> You cannot make this movie into a game, period. It doesn't need to be made into a game. It doesn't make sense. I actually just listened to a podcast with Zach Krager, who, if you Google a picture of him, you you will be surprised who he is. And he's the writer and director of this. Mm-hmm. But he's also an actor from The Whitest Kids You Know, Sketch Group, and you've seen him in other things. So it makes no sense that he is the person who wrote and directed this movie. He's a comedian. Uh but on the podcast I listened to with he when he talked about his the story of this movie doesn't translate to a video game at all because it's about the literally not to get too like into it it's about women's pressure in society to do things they would normally say no to doing because they think it makes them look like a bad person or or off-putting like that's not trans you can't translate that into a a video game (laughs) you cannot do that uh so i don't see how this could be at least a video game that has any uh good relation to the movie (laughs) besides the title yeah i was really shocked when i saw this that this was a yeah. I just couldn't believe that they're making this into a, <laughs> into a, mo- a video game. I just was really surprised. It makes. Uh, no I will sense. say, also granted, that is a super. That movie was way weirder than I thought it was going to be. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, I still enjoyed it. It was just way weirder than I thought it was going to be. Uh, but Josh, so you say this game not going to be good. But what if they get the voices of and likenesses of <laughs> Justin Long and Bill Skarsgård and Georgina Campbell to come and like be part of this game? Then, then are you in? Well, let me tell you something. I stand with SAG after, and if if this strike wasn't happening, they probably would have gotten the likenesses without paying them any extra money. That's true. 
So no, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't think that they it. should get the voice cast because these people have better things to do. I really have a hard time believing. Maybe they'll prove me wrong, and I'll be happy. But I can't imagine this being even remotely good. Okay, so uh, go ahead, Josh. Give us your open critic slash Metacritic score for the Barbarian video game when it releases. What's it going to score? Two point four. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's it'll be like a five point five because it's gonna be like it's probably gonna it's gonna be like Friday the thirteenth. And as long as it as long as it works, unlike the Friday the thirteenth game at a certain point, um it'll be a mid it'll be mid because people like those games as long mm-hmm. as they're functional, people enjoy them, but for how long when you already have games that are like Dead by Daylight's like a evergreen game for yeah, that genre. At this point, yeah. <laughs> Uh, even even Texas Chainsaw Massacre, very positive uh, takes on that game, but people don't talk about it anymore. Yeah, that thing fell off the face of the cliff, off yeah. the cliff real quick. And it's and it's Halloween month, so yeah. like they should be talking about it all the time. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Josh. Anything in video game news or stories that you want to jump into? Uh, uh I don't. I mean, do you. We can talk about. You want to talk about the new PS fives? Sure. <laughs> uh, we got some PS5 Slims coming out. Uh, you will be able to buy the Slim version and the disc version. Uh, you will also be able to buy uh, a removable disc drive, kind of like uh, if you had like were like me and you had like an Xbox and you wanted the HD HD DVD, DVD drive. Let's drive. go. <laughs> uh, so you'll be able to do that as well. Um, and this had been brought up in our chat, but because of the lovely DMCA, uh, you will have to be connected online to use that disk drive, which is a bummer, especially if you just want to watch a movie. <laughs> uh, well, I think it's just a one-time authentication. I don't think you have to be after that. Is it for just that one movie or every movie? No, I think just the first time you connect just the for drive. the disk drive. Yeah. Okay. If that's the, the case, then the people. Thing. We're over exaggerating. Yes, I think it's. I'm pretty sure it's just the first time you connect the drive to the console, it has to check in with the internet. Right, and you know that makes more sense because I was like, well, wait a second, I I have a DVD player that's not connected to the internet. And it yeah, works just fine. It, it's the same reason that like on the PS5 and the new Xbox, like how you have to like, hey, like you have to like download like the Blu-ray player. Like it's the same thing, like but just done differently. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes more sense. See, I I just started listening to people and actually read <laughs> read some things. Um, now I believe there is not a price drop. Is that correct? Yeah. So the, uh, disc version, actually, it will be the exact same price. The discless version is actually 50 bucks more, which is, uh, I mean, I get, I kind of get it. Um, you'll know more about this than I will. Is there any change in the, any, any internal change? Like we're not, Uh, we're not back in hard drive harder or better. Hard drive's bigger. Hard drive is bigger. Oh, well, if the hard if the hard drive is bigger, then the fifty bucks is not a big deal. I actually, I'm surprised. Usually, when the slim ones come out, they charge more, <laughs> so or at least cl- like fifty bucks more. I, I'm, I'm right. Well, maybe I'm thinking of the the pros, not the slims. Yeah, the slims are usually, usually cheaper. Right? Yeah, usually the first revision is at the very most the same price. Usually, often there's been a small price cut, but right, right. It, there have been revisions that like i think even with like the 360 when they went to like the third version that had like hdmi built in and things like that like i think that was the black one i think that was yeah. more yeah. than even though that wasn't really the otherwise the internals weren't really any different um so i it, it's not completely like uncommon for this but it or it's not completely uh, unheard of for this to happen but i do think it's more uncommon that they're more expensive yeah i mean I- i'm glad that they're doing it i think it's kind of unfortunate that they're just now putting these out as you can just finally get like regularly get ps5s yeah like they i mean i think i've definitely seen them for the past couple months but i think like now i always see them so i feel like we're Mm -hmm. finally at that pre-holiday stock levels of things so i think kind of is unfortunate that they're they're gonna be uh is this coming out in november yeah that they're dropping these like Right as they're getting stock for their, you know, right towers, uh, which is just a downside for Sony, not for anybody else. 
Uh, what do you yeah. think of the look of said? Do you think? Do you still think it's a an ugly abomination? I mean, it looks better, but I don't think adding like a hash through the sides <laughs> makes it look any smaller. If that's what they were trying to do, it is actually it is smaller <laughs> than the current ones. So. It is a little smaller. Yeah, uh, it doesn't come with the base, though. I do know that that's uh, kind of funny. Well, it, <laughs> it it comes with the horizontal, not the vertical. Right, you got to yeah. pay thirty bucks for, <laughs> for the horizontal, horizontal one. For the vertical. So stand, everyone yeah. else was wrong. Sony wants you to put it sideways. <laughs> that's right. That's right. If you want to have it vertical or. Yeah. You have to pay for that luxury now. You got to pay for it. <laughs> which I don't know that you really probably have to either, because I think mine. Well, I guess maybe the bottom's different on it, because I like, a, like it the looks current different. ones. Yeah, the current ones stand just fine, but it's a, it's like a, it, it's like a, just a, um, like a circle, like a chrome circle, hollow in the middle. Oh right, but what I'm saying is like the current one without a. I guess it does have a stand that you can screw in. It's a like, black stand, yeah. Yeah, I was like, because my current one though it is horizontal it's the only way it fits oh anywhere. it does sit it sits like a like a quarter of an inch off the ground right yeah i was like i feel like base. i i stood it up vertically once and it didn't really need the stand but <laughs> yeah probably not so but i could be wrong like i said so yeah yeah so cool uh hey josh i, I mean i know this is kind of old news now and everyone says they're over it but we haven't had a chance to talk about it uh sure Xbox owns Activision now, eh? I guess. I mean, is it even official? Because I hear this another like, <laughs> aren't they still going after him? Ah, no, it's done. It's done. done. Is that official? Official? It is official. Official. Yep, they have closed the deal. Good. So. Good. I mean, great. It's too bad for Microsoft that no one is excited about this anymore because it took so long <laughs> for this to happen that it's just old news. Do you think it's because it took so long that no one's excited about it anymore? Yeah. All the wind is out of the sail. Yeah. It's just floating in the middle of the ocean waiting to be eaten. Yeah. Uh, it's, I I think like when it was announced, it was huge, right? Mind-blowing announcement, mind-blowing mm. price. No one could believe it was happening. People were mad. People were happy. Uh, cats and dogs. Uh, women kissing women in the streets and men kissing men. Everyone was going nuts. Uh, <laughs> but now nobody cares. It's just uh, another thing. I think that the people who didn't want this to happen are still like not thrilled about it, but I, I don't know. Uh, I'm happy that it's done because we don't have to hear too much more about it, but we're not going to see anything until next year. Like yeah. announcement wise. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's just too bad if they could have had it, locked up and taken care of when it was announced i think it would be a bigger deal um now well not now time wise because it wouldn't but well we got call of duty coming up so yeah yeah there would still be some buzz about what was going to happen in november uh so i don't i don't know i don't know i'm over it just like everybody else i guess so you know phil and friends are going to be at blizzcon this coming weekend though right yeah, but like, can anybody save BlizzCon at this point? They've buried know. themselves like a thousand feet in the. It's not six feet under. They're like a thousand feet in the ground. Yeah, I I am most interested in how they handle Call of Duty moving forward. Not in the sense of like what form platform it's going to be on. I don't care about that. Yeah. But in the sense of you know, Activision for the most part, like yes, Activision Blizzard King, like Blizzard and King had their things they worked on. But at this point, Activision basically was call of duty at this point right yeah. all of their studios that's what they did um so i i do wonder what they're going to do now with you know there's been the interviews about talking about like you know bringing back old ip and letting studios work on what they want to and all that but like if that means that you go from call of duty every year to call of duty every two years or every three years yeah is that really what they want to do like is that their what they would allow studios to do does infinity ward come with activision yeah they're part at of the that. end of that umbrella okay so they can still do the back and forth on call of duties because it was every other year right? it was like activision there was, there was three ward. studios actually in sledgehammer uh because it was infinity ward sledgehammer and treyarch oh treyarch that's what i was thinking of so treyarch was doing the uh every other years right for a while. Well, in theory, they were rotating between all three of them. Like that oh, one right. would okay. take each. Yeah, that's how out of touch with making these games. 
uh, the Call of Duty ones. I, I mean, I don't think it's bad for a Call of Duty every two years, but uh, that would mean, I don't know. I mean, with the money I imagine Call of Duty makes, I think that you'd want to put your assets into more Call of Duty stuff if it's right. not main games. Maybe it's trying to keep Warzone more competitive with like Fortnites and stuff. Although mm-hmm. based on the trailers I see for Warzone in the past month, like it seems like they're trying to be Fortnite. Yeah, it does. Which doesn't make sense to me. I'm watching these trailers like Ash Williams is in Fortnite this month. <laughs> yep. And I'm like, how do they make that work when someone's in a helicopter firing a machine gun and Ash has a chainsaw? On his hand, right? <laughs> How does that work? Or like uh, Skeletor's in it? <laughs> like, that's oh, yeah. a weird of one. You want some Skeletor in there? How do you get? And Lilith is in it from uh, Diablo. Mm-hmm. Uh, very interesting. So maybe they are on that track already, but um, I don't know. I mean, they're going to make all their money from King Games, anyways. It doesn't matter. Yeah, that's true. I mean, King is where the <laughs> Activision gonna... does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is where they're going to crush. Um, it is interesting. Unintended. Though, Yes, it is. Yes, <laughs> um, that is where, it, yeah, just because, you know, realistically, if you look at, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, the last 10 games Activision has released, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them have been Call of Duty games, it, you know, like, yeah. so yeah. It, it just is so much of what they do these days. And I, I was someone who used to play every single Call of Duty. Like, that's all that I did. That was, like, my shooter that I played all the time. And obviously, I've wrote to, I have since, you know, moved off of that. But I would be really curious if they do, you know, everyone. The one game that everyone's talking about now that they want back is Prototype, of course. Uh, but I, I would be curious if that, you know, if a couple of their studios, even if there was a bit, like, maybe even if it wasn't the big studios. But, like, if, you know b Knox and raven suddenly were like hey we want to be taken off of call of duty support we want to make prototype like is it just Why not? sure is that cool you know yeah. um you know or if Treyarch's like you know we don't want to do zombies for call of duty but we want to do a, a standalone horror game yeah is it just cool go do that and then that means we get you know like i just i'll be really really interested to see how they handle all of that yeah so. for sure and I do hope that they allow students to students studios to go out and do um, different things. I mean, it um, seems to be the case, right? When you look at Hi Fi Rush, has oh, probably yeah. the best example of that yeah, right absolutely. now, at least. So yeah, uh, we'll see. Ho- yeah. Hopefully, I think that would be really cool if they let them be more than just a Call of Duty studio. Yeah, I I do think that you know Xbox really has had a very good track record of letting studios do what they want to do, um, and and work on the projects they want to work on. Um, like you mentioned, King is obviously going to be a major money maker here. But I mean, the question also is: Do you spend seventy billion dollars to not release a Call of Duty every year? No, I, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, like I don't know. Right. Yeah. So yeah, cool. Uh, well, not gonna lie, most of the video game news I was like not super stoked about. Is there anything yeah, else in the game fine. video game world that you want to talk about? No, I agree with you. I think it's mostly just kind of like a slow video game news yeah. stuff. Um, real quick, just kind of final thing then. Uh, so Capcom in their latest financials still said that they have a multi-million dollar selling game that's coming out before March 2024. Um, this has to just be the next Monster Hunter, right? Like this is the sequel to Monster Hunter World. I mean, I, I can't. I, I also talking about studios being known for one thing now. Uh, <laughs> I know that they have Street Fighter, but it's dwarfed by Monster Hunter. Yeah. So, yeah, I would imagine we haven't had a Monster Hunter in like a big one in like two years now. Yeah, because they had years? Rise that was like, you know, has now re- been ported, you know, to kind of everywhere. But, yeah. you know, we haven't had a proper, proper sequel to to Monster Hunter World yet. So I feel like that's got to be what this would be. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. Yeah, we know Dragon's Dogma is supposedly coming out next year, but it's supposed to be later next year as far as I know. Obviously, we've I can't imagine that another Resident Evil is ready yet. Um, I don't imagine that a new, obviously we just got a new street fighter. So it's probably not that it's not street fighter. Yet. You know, so it's not going to be that, uh, there's, they have some smaller games that they talked about, like Pragmata and that one that they showed at the, um, Xbox showcase that I can't remember what it's called, but with all the, the swoopy stuff coming out of the portals, that's very specific. I know, um, <laughs> swoopy stuff, yeah. so that's why, yeah. but I don't know that that's going to be necessarily like a million seller game. Uh, so 
the only things I can figure that it is, is like, you know, they finally are bringing back deep down from the PS4 reveal, right? We're going to get deep down finally. Sure. Um, you're the only person who remembers what that <laughs> is. Remembers that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I feel like it's got to be Monster Hunter. I would love if it was like something, you know, like that much desired, like Dino Crisis like reboot. Like that'd be it's pretty not sweet, gonna be, yeah. but it's not yeah. going to be. Yeah, I feel like we're getting a new Monster Hunter. Man, I really wish I could get into Monster Hunter. I just have never been. Same, into it same. So. I think it seems very cool, but I, I don't like what I've played. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, hey, let's move towards wrapping everything up then. Um, and we'll move on to some recommendations for a well-rounded life. Obviously, we're a gaming podcast, but we want to give you one other thing that we're currently into as helping us live that well-rounded life. Josh, what is your recommendation for folks? Hey, uh, so I don't remember uh, did I, if I talked about going to see the Swell Season uh, concert, Glenn Hansard, and um, I, always, I don't want to say her name because I always mess it up. It's uh, uh, Arketa Milk. Uh, boy. <laughs> I will say we have at least talked about it. I don't remember if you talked about it on the podcast. Arketa Erglova. Um, so they did the movie once together um starring they started together and essentially started Glenn Hansard's career uh so that being said after we saw that show which was a you know top 5 show of my life i kind of got back into to Glenn Hansard and Swell Season not that i was out of them i just wasn't actively listening to them cuz it's like s- mostly slow stuff but Glenn has a lot of albums of his own uh, so I've been going down that rabbit hole and going through YouTube. Like I love that. I do love the algorithm when it works. Mm-hmm. And um, they pulled up a video of once the Broadway show, mm. and it was in this one wasn't in, in New York. It was in uh, it wasn't New York yet yeah, because the mother from How I Met Your Mother uh, plays sings and plays a main character in the Broadway show. And this was in London where they played. And after the show was over, um, they had Glenn Hansard come out to, in, to sing a song. And he sang a song called The Old Triangle, which I had never heard of. It is an old Irish song. And it's like a song. I, I meant to look up how what this is, um, the type of song this is. But it's like one of those songs where... A, like many people sing you could like walk into a room at an event and people sing and you sing it uh, shoot i used to know the word but it's like you sing a verse and someone else sings a verse and someone like else around sings a verse. around thank you that's what it was uh so it's sung and around and he they played this at the thing at the show uh, and i was kind of fascinated by it and then it kept popping up like here's another youtube video of them him singing it somewhere else and then we went to the Cape to celebrate our 10-year anniversary, and we went to the old British Beer Company in Hyannis, which was now changed because they sold all their locations. And it was a restaurant called the Old Triangle. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. That's weird. This is like permeating itself into my life. And uh, I would say I listened to this song, and it doesn't matter the mood I'm in, whenever I listen to it, it just it makes me smile and it 100% turns my mood positively. I'm feeling more positive thinking about it. I don't know why, but if you're curious about it, I would say check out. I could say check out the restaurant, but you can't unless you're on Cape Cod. So I'll keep that for me and you, and you can go visit and let me know if you go visit. Uh, but look it up. Look up uh, on YouTube. Look up the Old Triangle, uh, Glenn Hansard, and give it a listen. Let me know what you think because I think uh, it'll turn your day around. If you're having a bad day or a rough day um, or you're just in a down mood, pop it on. I've listened to it like a hundred times now, and it makes me feel good every time I hear it. Uh, and it's not necessarily like uh, the best song in the world. It's just a fun song like nice fun happy song so that's my recommendation feel good song the old triangle a u l d all right well dang there you go uh so i have kind of two recommendations i guess um (laughs) are you sure (laughs) yeah i i guess i do i guess i have two recommendations um 
So my recommendations, uh, one of them is a YouTube channel that is uh, new-ish, newer, um, and has gotten, well, gotten, he's gotten reasonably popular. Um, it's just for Matt Horn. Um, Matt Horn is a drum tech. So he is the person who goes on tour with bands and he's the person who like sets up drums and like all these good things for like the drummer for the bands he's working for. Um, he just, and so he just kind of films like these behind the scenes, like there's no audio really other than him talking. So you do have to actually re- read the closed captions and that's where he explains everything that's going on. Um, he never t- says the bands that he's working with, but it's very easy to figure out that he just finished up um, being the drum tech for falling in reverse on their tour with um, Avenged Sevenfold. So that's like what he just okay, did. Okay. Um, so there are just these really interesting videos. If you just want to see like what it's like to like be backstage at these huge concerts and these huge venues um, and see like kind of like what the life of like a roadie is like um, really, really kind of an interesting thing. Uh, one, I wonder about, so falling in reverse is a band that I have listened to off and on. Like I, it's not a band that's regularly like in my rotation, but I do listen to them from time to time. Mostly because I think Ronnie Radke is a it seems like a really interesting dude, <laughs> it's like, like the lead singer. Like I just don't know I don't, about how I feel about him. Uh, but it does. It's interesting because watching these, like they're going to be in Iowa actually in January, like on their own headlining tour, um, and it kind of makes me want to go. <laughs> like just to, like since I've watched all this stuff, but their drummer is a touring drummer. Like he's not an actual quote unquote member of the band. So I don't know if he's still going to be with them then or not. But anyway, right. so, uh, but that's just, like I said, if you're kind of really into the music scene or you like going to concerts, check it out. He does a couple like side gigs too with like bands that he like helps out for like just one show that he kind of shows like what that's like as well. Um, yeah. So pretty cool. Just check that out. The other thing I'm going to recommend is actually a book. Um, I have been trying to get back into just reading, reading more. Uh, most of it honestly has been audio books rather than sitting down and reading other books because otherwise I have to do stupid reading for my doctorate. Um, but I just finished a book not just recently that's a couple of years old, but I was I was quite smitten with the book. I thought it was great. Um, and the book's called Under the Whispering Door um, by TJ Clune. It came out in 2021. Um, it is pretty well um enjoyed uh it's a book that's pretty highly rated uh but i will tell you just kind of the first line of like the the book jacket says when a reaper comes to collect wallace from his own funeral wallace begins to suspect he might be dead that's like the little like there you go so if you're interested in a book um the reason i'm recommending this is i'm someone who back in the day used to read a ton i haven't read much for pleasure lately but trying to get back into it and maybe it's because it was an audio book, but this was literally the first time I've read a book and it made me cry while I was reading it. Oh. So, and it wasn't till the end, but I definitely like shed some tears while reading this book. And again, maybe it's because it was an audio book and not me actually reading it. And though I've read very emotional books in the past, they've never actually made me cry. Uh, but this one totally did. So under the whispering door, I thought it was pretty great. Um, feel free to check it out if you're interested. With that, Josh, what do you say we wrap this show up? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. In addition uh, to finding us on Twitter and Instagram at Board with VG, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Board with VG. So feel free to give us a five-star rating over there. Also, if you want to communicate in the more long form or you're just not feeling social media, please feel free to email us at boardwithvg at gmail.com. We tag our stuff with hashtag Board with VG, so please use that hashtag as well on all your social medias. And whatever podcast service you're listening to us on, we encourage you to give us a stellar rating. That is, whether you're downloading us from the Dice Tower Network feed or our very own standalone board with video games feed. Uh, You can find me on all the things at Why So Serious. S I R R I U S. Kyle, where can people find you? So you can also find me on all the usual places at Psychocross, C Y C O C R O S S. As always, if you have any suggestions for future topics, be sure to reach out to us on the social media because we want to talk about what you want to hear about. And remember, everyone, whether it be board games or video games, never stop gaming.